Well, I, I guess my question is, and so some of you guys, I mean, this is probably pretty open and pretty an open question. I have a question. My biggest thing is, you know, what do you guys want? What do you guys want to know here? I'm a pretty much an open book. So my theory, my theories and philosophies on what I do, you may not believe in, but I can kind of go through my clinic pretty quickly. I can go, I can answer specific questions if you guys have them. I can uh, kind of start it. And if you have questions, I can go from there. What do you think? Can you hear us? Yep. Yeah, I got you. Can you, uh, I've, I've, your clinics are great. You've done an awesome job. But are you able to, I want to know more of the counters, what you're running off there. When you're having trouble running the wide zone, what's your best counter? What's your, I know you say you know your offense. You do this, I do that. I get it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so answers off of the wide zone. So um, what I'll do is I'll kind of start baseline what it is, and I'll kind of go from there and then answer questions specifically. So what I'll do is I'll give you a base, and I'll go off of that, but that's, that's a heck of a start. I like that. So let me do this real fast. Okay. So I'll get you, you know, I'll kind of go through the basic part of it and I'll just get you guys to understand what we're doing. So number one, you know, I, if you guys haven't seen some of my, one of my clinics, from my clinics, it is, I'm, I'm an open book guys. I really care less. So let me show you the North. Let me show you this first. So, you know, I told you, you know, I'm going to go speak with the Louisville staff in a couple of days. And so basically this is um, Dwayne Ledford. This is when he's the OC at Louisville. He was the O-line coach and run game guy at North Carolina state for the past few years. Um, he's a wide zone guy. And so, you know, when, when I look, when people ask me what colleges really truly look at wide zone, I tell them, you know, two years ago, or, you know, it was North Carolina State. This year, it's, um, you know, this year is probably, I would say, you know, this year is probably Louisville, Oregon. Um, you know, it starts to kind of go downhill because I, I believe the true philosophy of understanding zone is, it's not necessarily a way of blocking. It's kind of a family in theory. I tell people if you're, if you're going to if you're going to run wide zone, um, you have to marry it. You can't date it. It's like the sixty year marriage when you know she's you've been married for sixty years and she's not giving it up and it's just not sexy anymore. You got to seduce her and make her give it up a little bit, you know. And, and that's that's kind of what how I how I perceive this offense to people. I'm like guys, you just have to understand and, and trust it. So what you're going to see right here is you're going to see wide zone of the weak side. And what I want to show you guys is. I want to show you how this works. This is uh, an odd front. So it, it, the rules for basically the running back, and the first thing I always teach is this guy. I teach the running back first. Before I teach a line, before I teach quarterbacks, you have to teach the running backs because he is what we call the choreograph, the choreograph part of the dance. He has to, he's the choreographer. He has to make all these guys flow so that the O-line get a nice decisive run read for, the, for where they're going to fit and where they're going to put their head placement for the running back. So where he's going to aim is, so going back to philosophy, you know, you know, we, people have asked me what's the difference between stretch, wide zone, mid zone, tight zone. So, you know, Gibbs or, in, in, you know, some of those guys like Benton will tell you, you know, stretch is going to be four yards outside the tight end. Okay. Wide zone. Okay. Is going to be at the tight end somewhere for us. It's inside foot of his tight of the tight end. Mid zone for some guys is usually the butt crack or the play side foot of the guard. Okay. And inside zone is usually either the butt crack of the center or the, or the play side foot of the center. So, you know, you've got stretch, wide, mid, and tight. And really what they all are is they're just aiming points. That's really all they are. They're aiming points. They're ways to create flow. They're understanding where gap responsibility is for these run, for these def the defensive players. So if I'm going to aim out here, then i got to realize that that's where all the defensive guys are going to aim. So I have to be able to match that angle. And wide zone, same thing. So what's going to happen is this running back is going to aim right here, inside for the tight end. What he's trying to do is he's going to try to get to that point as fast as he can in five steps. Now, if if this guy right here runs at this point as fast as he can for five steps, what he's going to do is he's going to deliver all the flow that he wants for these O-line know what's going to happen. So as you watch right here, he's going to rock or step. He's going to put his foot in the ground. He's going to get to his aiming point as fast as he can. Notice that his angle departure is what's going to create – this angle of departure for linebackers, which is going to clearly define what the O linemen are going to do. You must maintain your five steps. You've got to push the line of scrimmage. Okay. And we're going to try to get vertical right now. So the reason I tell people, you know, what the whole theory on this play is the theory is I need you to, I need you to horizontally displace the defense for five steps before you get vertical. This is not a soft run play. Okay. This is, this is fast. This is, angry this is physical and, and that's kind of what you need to know so 
going from there, here's what you got. So, again, this is an offensive team. So, you just saw college. I showed those a pro before. This is a uh, previous team I was here in Texas. This is an odd front you're going to see right here, okay? And you're going to see uh, a combo right here. You're going to see a um, you're going to see a combo right here, okay? And you're going to see a cutoff right here. Running back is going to aim at the inside for the tight end. So, you know, we talk about personnel. We talk about groupings like that. The number one thing you need to understand is it doesn't matter who you have. You just have to have base rules and you got to understand your system like you talked about before, Coach. You know, for us, if we have a tight end on the line, okay, if we have a tight end on the line, he's responsible for the play side force guy, so whoever that is. So tight end on the line, auto, he's got force player. It doesn't matter who it is. If I have a tight end and a B back or an H back, H back is going to insert himself where the running back would go. If I don't have a tight end, let's say he doesn't exist, then the B back has got to take the force player as an auto fit. Okay. So basically, here's what you got. Okay. Running back is going to read defensive end to nose guard. He's going to take five steps. Defensive end is going to maintain his he's going to maintain his gap integrity of C gap. He, he flows with it. Okay, running back knows by the time he gets the ball in his hand on his third step, he's not going to get outside. Okay, so he's going to snap his eyes to, to the nose guard. He knows on his fifth step he's not going to get past inside the nose guard, so he's going to put his foot in the ground and get vertical and come right off this press because here's the here's the hole. Again, think about this, guys. I'm just trying to horizontally displace you guys. Okay, the whole point is I'm just going to try to move you this way so that I can get you cut in half. Okay, that's all we're trying to do. If you really want to think about what that is. We're just trying to cut you in half. So philosophy, guys, for me, I'm just trying to get you running. I don't need the best offensive line to go around. So coach talked about what, you know, basically what our answers are to wide zone. So we have multiple answers to wide zone. Okay. So number one, I'll just show you. I'm, I'm sure I'll have some just right here. Okay. So number one, if your defensive end is squeezing us way too hard. Okay. So if your defensive end is squeezing us, so, you know, a lot of people talk about the defensive end. What do you do? How do you handle that? Okay. So right here, you're going to see, okay, you're going to see them squeezing this. They're going to reduce this front. This kid's going to come screaming off the edge because he's been trying to chase us down. You know, for us, we tell our guys, we don't want to do anything to stop flow. So we want you to flow because if I can get you to flow because we're being successful to play, the first thing I'm going to do right now, is I'm gonna get on the I'm gonna get out the edge as fast as I can, okay? And I'm gonna run boot. So our boot concept is pretty simple. Okay, we're it's just the old naked concept. You know, when you talk about, you know, waggle from the old wing T guys and whatever it might be, that's all we're running. And the theory is I'm just trying to I'm just trying to flood you as fast as I can. So looking from this angle right here, you're gonna see compress, reduce sets. Okay, our rules are if we were if we're gonna if we're gonna fake a wide zone to one direction and we're gonna come back the other way with a naked, I our rules are real simple. Somebody has to be outside in this Coke bottle right here. Okay, which means somebody's whoever it is, this kid's gonna do it on a corner concept. If he's out wide, he's just gonna random he's gonna run mandatory outside release. Okay. This kid right here, all right, he's gonna run the crosser. So somebody's gotta be here, somebody's gotta be 17 to 22, somebody's gotta be the flatline runner, and somebody's gotta be the postman. The idea is we're just going to try to flood you. So we'll do it from different angles. So here's one right here. Okay, notice that you've got the corner concept being run right here. You've got the deep flood concept being run right here, and you've got the flat concept. Quarterback is always going to take – he's going to read flat to crosser. Okay, and that's kind of one of our answers we have right there. Um, there's a couple other things that we do. Um, I'll show you real quick. I actually made a clinic film on this, and I'll show you. And then Hey, Coach. Yo, yo, yo. Are you uh are you pulling guards like Waggle or is it true naked? We okay, so the theory behind it is we always pull our center. Okay. So the reason we always pull center is number one, um, we always pull center because um we always pull center because when most people read the triangle, they're reading guards. So if they see a guard pull, they think something's up, they're gonna go with flow of guard. So we're gonna pull the center because of one, it's not in the triangle read. Two, we also pull center because, you know, our theory is if my center pulls on naked, then my running back can make up for a missed block that maybe my backside guard couldn't get to because he squeezed down. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yep, no problem. So I'm just showing you some wide zones. So simple things we do, okay? We run zone read on it. So just like anybody else, we run zone read, and we actually build something into it. So we run a lot of now screens off of the back end of it, and this is offset. We're going to read this thing right here. Um, if we call zone read, we actually have it set up so that he can, this is not actually a, uh, 
this is not actually a, a screen he's going to run. They just We just run it the same way, and we're going to act like we're blocking the corner. And this kid says, sees, when he sees the pull, he's going to come crack the outside linebacker so that I can make up for the extra defender in the box. Does that make sense? So, you know, we just use the same plays over and over, and we allow a blocking scheme to look the same thing, okay? Um, you know, backside in, you know, we, we're going to cut him down. If he's just pursuing us really hard, we'll cut him off. Um, so here's one for you. I'll show you back into this one. So, again, aiming point, okay, running back is aiming point. It's always the same. So that's what you understand. So we're just going to press out, press out, okay? He's going to press out to here. He's going to take this kid here. He's going to walk there to there, okay? And then we're going to cut the defense bend down. And that's how it works. Um, we're just going to press you for, We're going to press you horizontally and get you here. If people start to overload us to a side, that's something we'll get into. Okay. Um, next thing, you know, we you know we cut people. We talk about that. We run bootleg. Oh, let me go to the next one. Sometimes, you know, and I I don't do this much anymore. But if we see a four eye that's just beating our butts, especially when I was in Missouri when we couldn't cut anybody on the back side, we did. Uh, what we would do was we would actually fold. Um, I don't really like folding because it makes the center block one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, but if this kid, about one time, two times a game, we'll do it, and we'll fold that kid around just like that, okay? Just to have an answer for a backside defense and it's just squeezing a living piss out of us, okay? Um, we will throw. So we run, we run RPO off of it. Our RPOs are a little different. Um, so our RPOs are different. How we run RPOs is based purely on pre-snap determination. Can the can the, the whoever whoever we're reading? So if we're reading right here, we're reading C gap. Whoever the C gap filler is, can he make our rules when we call the RPO? Is can he make a play on the pass? If he can, then we're gonna run the ball. If he can't, then we're gonna throw it. So right here, that was pre-snap determination, um, and we'll we'll change our RPOs week to week, guys. And here's why we do it. So we're gonna find out what your keys are. So we're gonna find out what you're what you're looking at. Okay, basically, who are you reading? And whoever you're reading is the guy. So if you're a quarters match team, like this team wasn't. This is they ran some kind of weird three thing, and they read the number three receiver. I don't know why they just did it. But for most teams, if we see quarters, we know that everybody's watching number two go vertical. Um, so we'll make sure that if we're gonna run the RPO with this kid, we'll carry him two steps vertically to, to move you back two steps and you back two steps, and then we'll crawfish out of it. Okay. I don't know why this, they did number three, but they did. And so it helped us out. Um, you know, now screens up top. You guys all know what the now screens are. Um, we'll do that here as well. We'll almost always run the now screen. If they give it to us. That's a gift. That's day one install for us. You guys all know. You guys all know these things. So um, those are answers for you that I have. Um, we screen off of the back end. I'll, I'll show you some more of that. We run option. Okay. So we get into the three back look. We'll actually run option off of this. So if, the, if you've got an overload backside, you're just pursuing us super hard. Um, we'll run option. And, and even if I don't have a running quarterback, I'm still going to run it. This kid right here runs like a freaking 40 year old wounded moose. Uh, no offense, guys. He's slower and pissed. But the fact that he actually will pull the ball and look like he's going to run it, it's going to hold people backside just because there's still a true option that that might happen. And, and so we'll hand the ball off right here and we'll hit wide zone to the front side. Um, that's another way we do it. Um, if we see man, okay, so here's my theory on man. And I know a lot of people get people think differently. If I see man and I think you've got more guys in the box and I can physically block because you're one of those guys, I will motion a guy in to block your your def your run defender and exchange my guy for yours. So basically, if I motion, okay, if I motion number three into the box right here, I know that this kid's a run defender and I know this kid's used to blocking people. So that's a good matchup, and now I can match your number. But the problem is everybody always gets on my butt about it and say, hey, you know, well, you're bringing another guy into the box because it's man. Guys, there's a reason he's in man coverage because he don't want no piece of nothing in this box. So me bring him into the box, then I'm going to go ahead and motion that guy over. Now, this is dirty. We can't do that anymore, but it was fun back in the day. Okay? But you can see this safety, guys, he wants no part of that business right there. And, and that's that's okay. I'm willing to exchange, a, a, a you know, a freaking DB um, for a kid that's, uh, for a kid that's, you know, that kid. I'm ex willing to exchange. I'll take the block on that kid and let him come in the box all day. So that's our theory against if we see man cover zero stuff. Um, if we see um, if we see blitzers, if we see a team that likes to do a lot of crazy fronts, <clears throat> a lot of crazy blitzes, you know, and for us, we see a lot of teams that will get the double A gap. You know, I think they call that, uh, 
you know, a lot of guys would call that the, the you know, what do they call it, a muddle blitz or something like that. And so for us, if we do that, we're going to get into empty um, because most people, if you go into empty, they have an auto check. And then if you bring a guy back in, they're going to get out of their crazy blitz and they'll go back to base. So we'll run, we will always find out what your empty check is in the first two game in the first two series. Um, we'll get into at least two plays of empty just to see what your check is so that we have an answer for whatever your empty check is. It's a way to keep you base because we're not hurry up anymore. So our philosophy was always, um, you know, our philosophy was always keep you on your, keep you on your toes. So um, it's not loading right now. So Here, I'll start answering some questions for you guys to make it easy. Coach, can you read those to me? Make yep. it, make it um, the first two questions we have are blocking rules. I don't know if you want to get in depth in that any little bit more. Absolutely, that's easy, man. Yeah, that's easy. So, what are they, what's the questions? Go ahead. It, just, it literally just says, "What are your blocking rules?" That's that, that is a, as basic. <laughs> that's a, a, that is. A, it, they're asking essentially wide zone one on one on blocking. Absolutely. So, okay. Okay. So here, here's what you got. Okay. So, oh, let's go back. Go back. Go back. Uh, I won't get into technique. I will just go into rules. Okay. So here we go. All right, so let me draw. I'll just do it here. For, I won't even dream. So, okay, so let me give you a, hang on. Let me get, uh, let me get you a good, clean vision here. So this, um, that's not a good one. I'm trying to get you a good, clean shot of what we would do so you guys can get a good look. All right, even front. Okay, so let me go here. All right, so rules against an even front. doesn't matter, 4-2, 4-3. We go covered, uncovered, guys. So we're always going to go play side first. Guard's always going to read it. So the first thing you need to understand is we're going to run wide zone to the left right here. Your biggest thing you need to understand is we are covered, uncovered, 100%. No questions asked, okay? So this guy's – so basically this kid's covered, okay? So we're covered by this guy right here. And this guy right here, he's got what we call a guy backside. He's telling the center, you got him by your – you got him. No big deal. You can take care of this business right here, okay? Um, so he's basically saying, you got him. I'm not covered because he's behind me or the center's got him. So what they're going to do is you're going to see a combo between these two going to these two, okay? They're running. They're going to run three steps to their aiming point. Aiming point is always play side nipple of the defender on the play side. They're going to go for three steps. Covered guy must maintain. He must maintain that block until he's physically knocked off, Okay. Backside guy, you got three steps to determine if you can hook this kid. If you can't hook him, then you're going to press and climb. So watch one, two, three, and then he's going to climb. As he, now he starts to climb his angle departure going to the play side nipple. After his third step, his angle departure is play side nipple. We are a play side nipple team, and that's what you're always going to hear me say. Okay, so right here, front, we're going to go right here. Basically, these two are working together to this front side, this front side one. Guard center is going to go to the play side nipple. Guard is going to aim for the play side nipple. We're going to go to this linebacker right here. Guard's going to maintain for three steps down the line. Uh oh, he's going to maintain for three steps down the line. One, two, three, and then he's going to climb after his third step, aiming for the play side nipple. Backside guy, he's got the solo cutoff block. One, two, three. He's going to cut that guy off backside. Okay. Um, it's probably best if I give you the if I give you uh if I, if I actually go over the rules with you. How about that? I'll give you the techniques with you. Okay. So, okay. So here we go. So here's what it boils down to how we teach it. We teach solo blocks first. We always teach the solo block first because everybody needs to be able to run the solo block. So for right now, we always teach front side solo. Then we teach the back side solo. So front side solo block, it doesn't matter. This is mainly for the guys that are, you know, if you're against an even front and you see a, uh, and you're a right tackle, and we're going to go to the right. Um, for the most part, unless that kid's a no shade front side, you don't have help, so you're soloed up. Your objective is to capture the play side defender, okay? And your your job objective is to capture the play side of him. You must define the read for the running back with your head placement. So we tell him, your aiming point is the play side nipple of the defender in front of you, okay? We, that is the biggest thing you understand is we block with our faces, not our hands. I don't allow my kids to press his front side hand because he presses his front side hand, then his head is always going to lag behind. Anytime a kid makes contact with a, with his front side hand and there's an angle of departure he's got to leave that's not straight ahead, then his face is always going to be left behind that hand, which is never, which is going to, one, you're not going to get a downhill strike. Two, you're going to force that, you're going to allow that kid to have a two-way go. And three, it's not going to clearly define the read for the running back behind you, which I, I think people need to understand that this is the number one thing you got to do is you got to, you have to make sure the running back knows where he's going. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead on our first step is our placement step. I am not a step guy. I am, I'm hundred percent aiming points. 
We're going to take the screws of our face mask. We're going to aim at the place I nipple the defender in front of us. Okay. And then our first step is going to be six to eight inches. So, I mean, you guys all know as well as I do, if you lean forward, your feet are going to follow sooner or later. So if I teach you your aiming point with your face, your feet will follow. So that's number one thing we tell our guys is we don't block with, uh, you know, we don't block with our, with our front side hand. We block with our face because that clearly defines the read with our running back. Now, things you need to understand. So as we do that, and you know you have a solo block, you cannot sacrifice your head placement for a, a, for a strike. So we tell our guys, if you know you don't have anything, if you don't have any help inside, you're gonna you're gonna error or or you're gonna you're gonna be cautious and you're gonna you're gonna punch the punch your screws in your helmet right down his sternum and slide it over um, because you want to make sure that kid doesn't because if you aim at the place side nipple and you have help, you can easily miss that kid coming back in. Okay, so here's an example: my right tackle. Uh, this is really early on in the season. You can tell our steps aren't that great, but I'm never going to get mad at him for his bad step as long as he understands head placement and he strikes this head first. So right here, watch. One, two. Notice you see his head strike. You see this kid's head, bow, right there. It moves back. Okay? So even though his first step sucked, his second step got on the ground, and he made contact, and his backside hand is strong with it, and he just takes that kid where he wants to go. Because he, he, he blocked with his head, this kid can't just play and hang out in that gap He's got to make a decision. I'm going to be gap sound or I'm going to go back inside and do something stupid, which clearly defines the reef of my running back. My running back is aiming for the inside foot of the tight end. He's going to go ahead and say, he's going to put himself to that tackle right now. He knows that tackles clearly define this read for me. So I know I'm not going to go outside. So I don't have to worry about pressing outside, but I'm going to continue my aiming point. Five steps. He can, he can, take, his, he can take his eyes to the next down lineman. He can get vertical. Now, that cockroach he got right here is because the kid tripped, so he didn't get a he didn't, he didn't get a uh, pancake uh, for that because that was cheating. I, I think it's cheating, guys. That's just me. I'm, I'm a hard ass, though. It is what it is, okay? So now let's talk about this. So the next part of our, our, our front side solo, guys, is truly is the backside hand. This is the, this is the secret sauce. This is the stuff nobody talks about, and that's that, that's that backside hand. When your face makes contact, your backside hand's got to make contact with that kid's ribs. <laughs> we tell our kids, man, your freaking elbow better be screwed to your elbow, better be screwed to your freaking ribs, and you're going to bring that kid up, and you're going to strike him as hard as you can. You're going to lift, and you're going to try to rip his shoulder pads right off his freaking head, and if you can do that, that means you're going to be successful. The front, the backside hand is called your catch hand because you're going to catch that kid and he falls back in on you, but it's also the ability for you because you're pressing forward, it also gives you that chance to just drive your face into it. And if that kid's maintaining gap integrity, he's running. That means his center of gravity is tilted already. That means that backside hand's lifting, just helping his center of gravity move. And that's where you get the quote unquote accidental cockroaches. So the backside hand is the biggest part and the biggest teaching key for all of our kids when we have a front side block. We try to tell our kids, bring your toes on his toes, roll your hips and grip. The big thing you need to understand is you know, it, it's, are we ever going to get there? No, probably not. But what we are going to do is we're going to try to force ourselves vertical because if you force yourself, so here's, here's a theory guys. If the defense's force is going downhill this way and my force is going sideways completely equal, op, equal forces combined are going to go back this way. And that's what we don't want. But if this kid's going this way and I take him this way as hard as I can as play side nipple and I don't do anything horizontally, then we're going to go this way at the bare minimum, we may go that way, and that's acceptable. We're not getting penetration, okay? So here's a good view. Go, go back back to the empty look, okay? So we're going to watch the left tackle right here. Man, this kid ain't nothing special, guys. He looks good, but he really ain't nothing special. But I want you to watch how he gets his head there, and I want you to watch his backside hand, okay? So here he goes. He's going to take it, okay? First step is good. Second step sucks because it's way too long, okay? One, two, but the backside hand, here it comes. You can see it. It's about to get dirty. And wham, he hits that thing backside. He, he rips that kid's shoulder up, knocks him right off the end zone camera. Does he actually block him? No, the kid doesn't block nothing because he's not very freaking good. But he runs him off the end zone camera. We get a play and clear to find the reach from running back. The front side solo is what we like to call the most important, unimportant block in this, in this play. He just has to clear to find the read in the first three steps. That's all he's got to do and just not get beat inside. If that happens, we can be successful. Okay, so right here, front side, right tackle. Again, big Dwayne Ledford guy. Okay, we're gonna step one, two. We're gonna aim at the play side nipple, clear to find the read for the running back. Backside hand's gonna stay strong to the inside inside elbow. One, two, throws the hand, doesn't do a very good job. But again, 
most important, unimportant block in football, it ain't got to be perfect. Just move him out of the way, clear to find the reach for the running back so he can get vertical right now. And that's how this play works. Okay? Quick question, Coach. Yes, sir. Um, if if the defensive end tries to make a move back inside, what do you what are your what are your coaching points for that backside arm? Is it to follow him down? Is it yeah? So so that catch hand is you're going to lift if you feel pressure coming back into your catch hand. If you're smart, so we tell our guys if you bring the catch hand, that catch hand is actually going to if he if he puts pressure to that catch hand and goes back inside, that will actually turn your shoulders for you, and that kid will, and then you can just slam that thing back inside. If you can catch him with that hand like you're supposed to, his force will turn your shoulders and actually block him for you. That's why we're so that's why we're so careful with that back hand. Okay. Um, solo block right here, watching the left tackle. He does a great job with the second step. One, two. Okay. He's gonna lock on. He makes contact with the face. He actually takes his arm out, but his back hand is there. He just drives that kid right on by. Was it a great block? Not particularly, no, but. He got him running, clear to find the read for the running back, and we're good to go. Okay, remember running back. Running back is reading defensive end to defensive tackle. Never read the force player. We're not reading this kid. We're reading one to two. Okay, watch what happens. Pressed out. But watch the head placement of this guard right here. <clears throat> guard's got that. Guard's guard's got the placement. His head's there. Running back's reading it. Any running back in America, if not well taught, is going to hit grass. If he gets grass right here, these two guys are going to knock the piss out of him because. Because they're there in pursuit, and that's not where we want to hit this thing. He's smart, puts his foot in the ground, and, and goes exactly where he's supposed to go on his fifth step. Right there. And because he does get to that point, he gets a much bigger gain and makes these guys chase him from behind after like 20 yards. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> now, the backside is really important, too. So we talked about the front side solo. Now we're going to teach you about the backside solo. So the backside solo is whoever, whoever it is that has to cut off a defender. So if I see an even front and I'm playing left tackle, we're going to the right, and I got a three, okay, I'm the solo. If we're going to the right, I'm the guard, and there's a shade on the center, I'm the solo because I have to cut that backside kid off. Whoever it is has to cut the first down lineman, backside of the center off, that is the backside solo to us, okay? Your job, cut this kid down and cut off the backside or just cut him off. Okay, so if you can't cut because he's too far, then it's your job to get your head to his play side, not your hands, not your hips. Get your freaking head across his play side because your head leverage is what's going to clear the fine for the running back and which is going to physically split this in half. Okay, so no matter if we're cutting or if we're not cutting, we tell our kids and we teach them the same thing. Your first step, you're going to gain depth and width and you're going to drop. Second step, you're going to cross over and third Third step, you're going to find your target's aiming point, which is going to be his thigh, his thigh pad, the play side thigh pad. And we're going to tell our kids, we are very detailed in what we tell them. We're going to say, you're going to bite the apple off the defender's play side knee. Okay? O lineman likes to talk in sexual innuendos and food innuendos. So we're going to always use those two, those two things. Think nipple to dick is our first two steps. Okay? And our aiming points are nipples and biting food off somebody's, off somebody's knee. So think about it this way. We're going to go ahead and we're going to press our, our face into that point as fast as we can. Now, even if we're not cutting, we're still going to try to press our face into that aiming point because, again, if I think of it and create a visual, a visual stimula stimulation okay, of getting to that point with my body, I can actually give them something externally to see and do. They'll do it, okay? So here's one, when we talk about throwing, I know some of you guys can cut blocks, some of you guys can't. We're going to cut here. We're going to watch the left guard and center. We're going to press out on this, okay, and watch what we're going to see. They're both in charge. They're both solos because they got to cut off that, ga that gap inside of them. They're going to press, run, and throw, okay? Then that's kind of how we teach that. That's how we teach the cut block. We're trying to get grass stains on our stomach, not on our sides because we want body surface, okay? Very important. Very important to know that. All right, so um, next one. Uh, next one. Here we go. I don't want to go there. I want to go here. Here we go. So some of you guys will get heel line runners, and this is the play I showed you previously. So this is the backside solo. He's got to get across this two right here as fast as he can. He's going to try to force his head. Watch. He's a, he was a freshman here, so you can see his first step sucks, but he does a great job of throwing his face into it. Watch. First step's not good, but cross one, two. Watch his face. Say so he starts to lean right here, lean, throw the face in it, and everything else will follow. Okay, now that kid's not the greatest ball player in the world, but he had been cut a hundred freaking times, 
and so he slows down, plays the freaking line of scrimmage. He wants to play with his hands now because he's been cut down a few times, okay? So the guy in front of the, the solo is going to be the postman. So again, go back to your concept. If I'm attack, if I'm the left tackle, we're going to the right, and there's a three, okay, and, I'm, I'm the, and I'm the solo backside, then the guard in front of me, is the, he's the postman. Whoever's, whoever's physically touched by the guy that, that the solo block's got to block, you are the, what we call the postman. I mean, you got to post up and make sure that this cutoff guy can get there, okay? You still have the same rules applied front side. You're going to aim at your aiming points. The guy you're supposed to go to, three steps, play side nipple. You're going to get there as fast as you can, okay? You, but your big thing is you have to stab your back hand, okay, and prop this guy for the cutoff. It is important so that important those guys know that you have to cut off the backside. You've got to prop that shoulder so that, that guy can get himself backside. So we tell our we tell our post guys, one of four things is going to happen, okay? One of four things. Number one, number one, what's going to happen, okay, is this. You're gonna get um, you're gonna get a dip and rip, meaning you're gonna stab. That kid's gonna be back far enough that he's not gonna press into you real hard. You're gonna rip that arm, okay? You're gonna get squared up, and you're gonna go to your aiming point. If that if you press up and that kid's real tight to you, and you stab that kid, and he just take he bodies up into you, we call it stab and pivot. You're gonna stab that kid, and then you're gonna you're gonna use his momentum, press off, and you're gonna pivot off of him. Okay, I'm gonna show you that in a second. That's good for you guys in the states that can't cut block. It's a really good way to have an answer to uh, a guy who's running heel line. All right, the next one is you can cut that kid. Let's say I got a tight three and I'm the, and I'm the guard, and that kid on the first step tries to run across my face, and we'll just cut him right there. And then number four, the last thing we call the cardinal sin, I tell him this is what gets Coach Caduti really pissed off, is that that guy goes across your postman's face. He's got to run him across the formation, across the hole, because he's just worthless, okay? So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a stab and pivot. We're going to watch right here. We're going to watch the left guard and left tackle. We're going to work this thing together. Number one, you got to understand that the combos are always here. Remember, we don't want solos. So these two are comboing. These two are comboing. These two are comboing. So what this guy knows, he has a slow call, meaning I don't have – this guy's this backer is not plus one over, so I ain't got to worry about nothing, okay? So what's he going to do and how is he going to do it? Number one, he knows this kid is a heel line runner. He is a tilted three, and he's going to come straight down the freaking line as fast as he can. So this guy's going to stab at the play side nipple, okay, of the defender in front of him, and he's going to go nipple to dick. This guy right here is going to stab hard into him. Okay, watch. One, two. He's going to stab this kid's sh his shoulder. Remember, his elbow is nice and tight. The backside, po the backside solo block has already crossed. He's already gained in de depth and width. He's now about to cross over, okay? So now this guy's into his aiming point. He is now going to press and pivot off of this guy to propel himself here so that this guy can get his face into the target and use that as momentum to get where I need to get. <laughs> all, right, so, all right, so the next one you're going to get into, okay, this is a stab. This is going to be a dip and rip, okay, from the center. So here you go. Remember, this play is all predicated on getting double teams. So let's talk about the double teams here. Now, here it is. So if you ever wondered what, 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 Goff, what Goff and his L.A. Rams were doing back then, was they were legitimately just trying to get double teams. They, they tried never to get a solo. So here's what you're going to get. You're going to get a double team here to here. You're going to get a double team here to here. You're going to get a double team here to here. You're going to get a double team here to here. Okay? Only free runners, but that. So here's how this works. Now, going back to previous play, now my linebacker, my, see this guy's touching me. First guy, first guy backside of the center is the cutoff guy. So I got to cut him off. That means you're the solo guy. You have to get this kid off. You got to get this kid cut off at all costs if you can. So what we tell our guys is this. This linebacker is plussed over. He's not head up or backside. He's plussed over a gap. So this center's got to say fast, fast, fast. So he's going to stab this kid right here, but he can't hang out. This kid's got to throw his face there as fast as he can. So here it is, okay? He's going to step one, two, three. He steps, okay? He's going to dip and rip and run to his target. Notice the backside guard does not do a good job of getting his face play side. He does too much with his front side hand, which is not what we want to get ourselves into, okay? But what he does do is he, he presses this thing by the hole. Here's what you need to understand about this play when we tell our running backs, and the number one thing you need to understand our running backs, okay, our running backs are taught very simply this one thing. You must you must go through the smoke and drop the hammer like Cold Trickle in Days of Thunder. We will show them Days of Thunder clips, okay, and say, hey, first the first one, here it is, Days of Thunder, nose Cold Trickle. He goes to get to the smoke and he lets off because he doesn't trust the process. And when he lets off and doesn't trust the process, 
okay? He ends up getting the crap knocked out of him. He gets put in the freaking hospital because he doesn't trust the process. He doesn't drop the hammer, okay? The next thing, next one we go to, second part of the second part of the second part of the, of the movie. He gets the, he gets around that, that last bin and there's smoke right there. And what he trusts the process, he drops the freaking hammer, he puts his foot in the ground, and he's and all of then clears for him. That's what we tell our kids, and we show them that the video because it's like, guys, if you trust the process and it's smoky, one, two, three, four, five, guys, that is cloudy as hell. Our, we tell our running backs, you cannot double cut and you cannot bounce back. That you cannot do it. You got to put your foot in the ground and you got to get vertical right freaking now. This is cloudy as hell. But watch what he does. Puts his, puts his foot in the ground, gets vertical, and the smoke clears. And that's what this play is all about. It ain't always going to be pretty, boys. This is a four-yard power play that turns into 40 yard later. Okay. All right. So talking about talking about combos and how this works. Here's what you understand. The combo is going to be, so again, we're going four-man front to the right, okay? So now you've got a front side guard and attack, a guard and center. Guard's got a three or a two or whatever you want to call it, okay? He's got that front side, and he's got a center coming with him behind. So he knows he's got help behind. We tell our guy, your, your job is to put your face on that kid's play side nipple, and you cannot get beat away from help. Meaning, real simply this, center, okay, guard, tackle. I got a tackle right here. I probably have a backer hanging out right here. And we tell our guard, you have help coming this way, so you better not freaking get beat to the play side. You better get your hat over there as fast as you freaking can and make sure for the everything holy that you get your head there and you don't leave this block until this guy physically knocks you off of that block. Okay? That is something people, I think, don't trust. And that's a big deal for us. So here's one for you. I'm going to show it to you. We're going to watch this. We're going to watch it right here. Okay. You're going to watch, you're going to watch the left guard and center. We're watching these two right here to these two right here. Okay. Guard knows he's got help. He knows the center's coming to the backside. So he's going to step play side nipple to dick. Okay. Putting his face in his target. There he goes. Boom. One, two, three. Center's going to aim at the same thing with his foot. So he's stepping flat. He's stepping vertical. We're going to get, we're getting, this is an aggressive freaking play downhill. We're running downhill. Now, He's going to go ahead and stay on this block knowing that he has this gap right here. That's his, his gap is responsible. He's responsible for that play side B gap, but he is not going to leave this block because he has not been physically knocked off by the center. He has to trust that the running back is going to take this linebacker to that gap. Exactly what he's supposed to do on his till his fifth step. Notice he's still on it. He presses it right here, puts his head for play side nipple. And there's your press. You get off at center. Never had to do anything. He had to wash a guy that was already trying to be in contact with a guard. You're going to put your foot in the ground right now, and you're going to get vertical. And that's how this play works, okay? Uncovered guy. So that center now, the guy who's helping him with him, here's how this works. You're going to step at the same play side nipple that the guy in front of you is stepping to. You're going to go ahead and step to his play side nipple, and you're going to run You're going to run three steps as hard as you can. So we tell our guy there's only three things that that covered defensive lineman can do. He can come to me, he can go away from me, or he can hang out and bull rush and play gap sound. We tell our guys, if you see if we want where your feet, if his foot goes away from me, then I'm gonna stay on my track, play side nipple track for three steps, and then I'm gonna climb. Remember, you cannot leave early because the running back is gonna deliver things to you. So everything's gotta be a dance. Running backs and linemen are gonna work together three to five steps, and everything's gonna hit vertically at the same time. Okay. If I see color to me, meaning that foot comes to me, then I'm going to stay on my angle departure. I'm going to press my face into this thing, and I'm going to try to knock my, knock my buddy off his block so he can climb because if that guy's coming to me, that means something's going to that other gap, and my guy needs to leave. If I take my three steps and that guy is still hanging on to my guy, then I'm going to take my, my front side hand, and I'm going to press that kid as hard as I can and knock him into next week, okay? And then I'm going to climb, and I'll make my job real easy on my covered offensive lineman. Okay, so here's an example right here, front side. Again, we're reading feet. Okay, we're reading feet of that D lineman right there. You got an odd front. We're gonna work a combo to here. Okay, so this kid's gonna stay play side nipple to dick, nipple to dick. He stays square. He had his catch hand ready. This kid went all the way inside of the catch hand. Okay, so what we're gonna get into, get ourselves into is the, the guard's gonna put his face there, front side, and he's gonna press this thing inside. Now you got your edge, and there's your cut. Well, there's your cut right there on the play. Okay, I saw a color to me. I take it over. I'm going to try to knock that guy off the block if I have to. Okay? So same front, same odd front, different team, different read. Reading, we're going to read the feet right here. Okay? It's real simple. 
this guard is going to read this guy's feet. Okay, so we're going to press pause here. He sees feet away. So one, two, three, and then I'm going to climb. When I climb, the running back is pressed and now I'm going to get vertical. And there's your hole. Okay, the secret sauce to this play, boys, is real simply this. The quarterback, the running back, and the center must be aligned. You cannot outrun your center, okay, at all costs. You cannot lag behind. If this thing doesn't press the C-gap right now, then 99% of the time, this thing is going to come right off the center's butt, as you can see. Okay? Now, here you go. Here's one for you. You're going to get an odd front. You're going to get an even front. This is an odd front team that's going to play everything just like they would an odd front. They just bump a guy over. This is a team that got into a four-man front against us because we ran the ball so much. So you're going to get head-ups right here. So we're going to run this play this direction right here. You're going to get a solo block front side. You're going to get a combo block here. So you're watching the center. Center's going to press to that five right here where my mouse is at. So here it is. The clap. Boom. One, two, three. On his third step, he knows that I'm not going to hook him. He knows that kid did not just run away from me. So I'm going to press, help him get that kid out. So now I got a nice, easy block. Remember the backside hand, his backside hand is underneath. And he's lifting that kid, okay? That's going to press me to my third to fifth step. I'm going to climb the backer. Now the backer went with my running back. Remember, see, backers are almost always going to stay on the path of the running back because this is an inside zone, guys. You're not giving them two-way goes. They got to fit these gaps. He fits the gap, and we get a vertical right now. This is a great example also of, all right, <coughs> This is the postman right here. This is the solo man. One, two. That guy's trying to cross my face. Cut. Right now. Boom. And there's your play. Does that answer questions when it comes to um, – that answer question comes to your rules, guys. Sorry, I, I kind of – I get on a tangent. With oh, that, that's good. I, I think it did, Coach. Um, kind of the next question we have, and I'll, and I'll kind of modify it a little bit, is do you, do you have any problems with that tight four-eye, zero four-eye front? Um, if so, do you have any wrinkles for it? Um, okay, there? so there are two things that we'll do, and I'll show the screen with you, but you need to understand something about this. There are two things that we'll do against an odd front. If we see an odd front, we're five for five. Okay, so you know inside zone against four eye fronts is not a good play. And if you guys are O-line guys, you understand the frustration of trying to run inside zone against tight four eyes when those backers are fitting really awkwardly. So for us, this play actually works really well against four eyes. So think of it this way, okay? So, and I'll draw it for you. And uh, let me uh, share my screen. I'll get it going again so you guys can go. So here we go. So let me get a let me get a regular freaking four eye, a regular four eye, and we'll go from there, okay? So let me get you a tight front here. I'm sure I have one in here somewhere. Um, I already went through those. Right. Actually, you know what? I got one right here. I guarantee I do. Squeeze. Let me see if I have. Let me see if I have it in here. Here you go, coach. That's even. That's a push. I don't want to push. I just want Cleveland. Actually, you know where I can go? I know exactly where I'm going to go. I'm going to go back up here. I know I got one for you. So four eyes for us, man, are, are you know, guys. It, it, it. All right, so. Here's what you need to understand about four eyes. Fours and four eyes, okay? So this is a team that would mess up four and four eye against us. So right now we're five for five. Ignore all these little people, okay? Ignore little people. Don't like little people. They're stupid. All right, so here's what we're getting ourselves into. So combo rules are covered, uncovered, correct? Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to go covered, uncovered, I'm covered. I'm uncovered. We're aiming play side nipple. Okay, I'm aiming play side nipple, and we're working to this kid. So there's our combo right there. Okay. People ask me, well, what happens if this kid pushes a gap right here as fast as he can? Well, if this kid shoots a gap, this play is hitting out here. All that takes is just a little, sh just a freaking arm, and this kid's not going to make that play. Okay. The next thing is, so this kid's going to play side nipple. He's going to try to get his head placement to the eight right there. He's going to try to get this play side nipple in the first three steps. We're going to try to get this thing hooked in the first three steps. Again, our theory is not one that says we want to hook it with our hips. We just want head placement, okay? So watch what happens. So boom, he presses into it. His head placement's already there, okay? This kid's playing B-gap not very well. Running back is going to aim at this point right here, so we're good. This We've got the edge right now. So he's going to stay on his path. Nothing has crossed his path, so there's no reason for him to change that path. And that's the front side of the four eye. So we love seeing four eyes front side. Back side, we just cut it off just like this. Okay, this kid will cut this. We'll tell the tackle, that's your guy. You have got to get him down, okay? 
if this kid's a heel line screamer, I'll tell you exactly what we'll do off of that in a second. So think of it like this. If this kid right here, can, we can cut him off, we're good to go. 100% good to go. If this kid's real heavy inline screaming, we'll run boot off of this. Because I know that this kid's gone, this running, this quarterback can get his head around, and that outside linebacker's got to make a decision. He's either got to play the flat or he's got to play the quarterback. And that's so that's our another answer. The other thing I'll tell you we'll do is we run push. And, and this is something, so you saw this front. This is the same game right here, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get you into, I'm going to get you a trip for me, Carolyn's push spot. I think this is right here. Boom. Um, actually, it's right here. So here it is. Same formation, okay? Same formation, same defense. Now we call push. So what we'll do is if we see a four or four I, or we see those guys that want to do that stuff, we'll tell our guys we're going to push. So instead of our first combo, ignore him, ignore him. Okay, they're, they're DBs, okay? We're going to press, which means we're going to take our first combo all the way out to this linebacker who's off the screen, meaning you're going to get this flow right here. Because that flow, if this kid is playing that tight four eye front, what's he going to do? He's going to see arc release. means he's going to run with it and maintain his gap. That means that, that means that play has been clearly defined. That means that that kid has now seen something different. So now my guard and center are going to go nose guard to this linebacker, which means that this kid has got to take whoever the B-gap player is. So here, this is that cut block you saw. So here it is. Watch the movement on this one. See how, see how everything flows a little differently? We're going to flow now. Now we're going to get you freaking running. And then we're going to cut you off. Okay, does that answer your question in the four eyes? I believe it does, Coach. Um, yeah. Next question is, um, what other ways do you want to address the wide zone? You name it, brother, I'd do it. Hi. So um, we do a lot of motions, and people ask us why. Number one, we do a lot of jet sweeps because if you don't honor the jet sweep, we're going to hand it. So, you know, for us, um, you know, we talk about – people ask us, you know, what we do. So here's one for you right here. So um, – I've got it right here. So, you know, like right here is an example of spring ball against our own defense. And, and so we tell, we have, we have a rule. So again, our quarterback's job is to hold this backside the end. So we're going to wide zone this way. So if we attach the jet sweep to this, we still have the option to run it. And our quarterback has two, he has two questions he can answer himself. Okay. Number one, he can ask himself, he can ask himself this one thing right here. Number one, does this defensive end, is this defensive end a heel line runner? If he's a heel line runner, then I'm going to give, I'm going to give this every freaking time without questions asked. So meaning if this kid heel line run and I attach this, then we're going to, we're going to basically RPO or jet sweep block this thing right here. And everybody else is running wide zone. Nothing changes. And this kid's going to go in motion. We're going to toss it. Okay. So again, window dress. How do you window dress it? Doesn't matter. So here you go. Toss it. Boom. Okay, that's one way to do it. And we'll run the crap. We run the crap out of that stuff, guys. If people don't honor it, that's what we're going to do. Um, I'll, I'll show you a couple other things that, we do, that we've done um, out of it. So look at why zone cutups right here. Just i show you. So here's one right here, guys. Um, so now you can see what we're in. You don't see the motion, but we are actually in tackle over, okay, with, a, with a, almost like a trips pro to this set over here. And we're going we're gonna to go to the direction that, you're that you have least numbers, okay? So... We overloaded you. You didn't adjust properly. It's time to go home runs. Okay. And that's, I mean, when you got dudes, it helps. So I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, so like, here's one way we window dress right here. Okay. We get in the diamond formation quite a bit. So if I have, if I have more running backs or, or H backs, we'll get in that formation just like that. And we won't change a thing. Okay. Now, do you get in that because of your personnel or is there more of a schematic advantage or is it a kind of a combination of both? <laughs> We don't change personnel. Okay. So what we do is we do this because either either one, we have at least two running backs that are really good. And two, we do it because we get one on ones. So if I if I like a one on one, yeah. well, we're gonna get in diamond. And I'm just gonna tell that we have we run option routes. No, I'm just gonna tell you run an option route. I mean, we're just gonna have true eight man protection. Because if you get in this formation here, guys, safeties have to commit to the box. And that's going to get you the true one-on-ones on the edge. But you got to be willing to commit to understand that I got to run the ball with eight dudes in the box. It's going to look like a foam, like it's going to look like Sonny Corleone in the phone booth in Godfather, right? You got dudes freaking just pounding in there, and you got one on one So you got to have a dude that can win a one-on-one -on -one and go from there. And I got some clips of that too. But we also do this. So we will also run. Actually, I'm going to give you. A, we'll go empty. You saw the empty right here. We'll go empty and we'll jet sweep ourselves into it, return it. Okay, we find ways to protect what we do. 
Um, there's one I really want to show you. Here's an empty one right here where we just handed it to the guy in the backfield. Okay. Again, phone booth, got one-on-ones on the edge. Um, there's there's really, there's a couple here. So here's one. We'll do this out of, this is uh, this is empty with a guy winged up. So we're just going to run with a guy winged up empty. We're running it to the left. He's going to shuffle. So if our quarterback runs this play or we have, we're in wildcat, to, to take the angle that the running back would normally take and to time it, we'll shuffle it three times like we do power, like you would power read. So watch one, two, and three. And he reads the same thing everybody else reads and just hits it. Okay. And that's, we're just in wildcat there. Quarterback's actually out playing wide right there. Um, we'll get an empty and do it. Um, let me see. There's a couple other ones. Tackle over. Um, there's one I want to show you. I got to get into. Um, here we go. Hang on. Let me do this real fast. So there's one. Do I swing a guy? Shift. I guess I don't have it in here, do I? Yeah, I guess I don't have it in here. We'll also we'll also jet to it and things like that. So um, there is going to be a question. I guarantee it, and somebody's going to ask. And I don't know. I don't know if it's in the chat. Um, but basically, I'm going to be honest with you. There's two things I'll tell you. Number one, um, you know, there's how do people stop it? People always ask me, how do you stop it? And guys, there's ways to stop anything that you do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, the question in our chat that that pretty much correlates that is is there a front you don't like playing against so not necessarily a front we say um we say that there's basically something that's going to make you going to get out of it and that's go back and watch the la rams 2017 uh or 2018 whatever year it was playing this new england patriots and how do the new england patriots um stop the rams run game and that's one there's two ways to do it number one Number one way you do it is you put somebody in every freaking gap, okay? If you put somebody in every freaking gap, then there's nothing you can do off of it, okay? So you have to have an answer. So our answers are we run toss and we run reverses. We will get on the edge, but we won't change anything for our kids. So, like, here's one for you right here. So, so we again, you get somebody, I mean, they're going to press, they're going to press the edge. They're not going to let you quote unquote, create, create flow, which means they create a hard edge for you. So you just get down and you freaking hit, you set the, let them set the edge and you get outside of it. And the other thing we'll talk about is numbers. If we can outnumber you and we know that you're a heel line runner with a backside D in, and we're going to compress this thing, we'll run reverses right off of this right here. So we're going to fake the toss. Okay. Notice they don't let it, they set the edge. They don't let us freaking widen. Okay. We run wide zone. And we get ourselves some old school wing T action, boys. Again, I don't pull anybody, so that's my theory. I just figure out how can I use that same philosophy. Um, how can I use that same philosophy? But so like toss. So again, they're not gonna they're not gonna give us the edge, guys. It's that simple. They're, these guys are pressed and they're taught to attack via the neck, and they're saying, "Screw you! We are not gonna let you freaking get out. They're not gonna let you move us. I mean, we're not gonna let you guys ride us outside." So our rule is if they don't let us, if they don't let us set the edge, then we're going to set the edge for them. Okay. We're going to bang down. Okay. We're going to bang down. You guys are already going down anyways. We're going to wrap this guy around and we're going to tell the center, the, the tackle, the tackles are the only guys we teach how to pull. And we do this during warmups and it's a big freaking joke. Okay. We te- it's like a joke in our warmups how we teach it. We just want to run. We don't teach you much. Just run. Okay. And then we tell this kid, you're going to take a toss. And you're going to read it just like you read wide zone. So if that defensive end get, beats this thing over the top, well, then you're going to cut this thing in like you normally would. Everybody else is running wide zone. So you can see what they do. See how they, see how they squeeze us real hard? <coughs> Boom. They squeeze us real hard. Just get on the edge and run, man. And that's how we do That's how. That's how. That's our answer. So people ask, how do you stop it? Well, they don't let you get double teams. They don't let you create flow. And that's that's you have to find an answer for that. And that's the number one answer off of it. And the other answer is, Get real freaking good at running boot, guys. If you want to run this play, then you better run boot, and you better freaking be good at it. Okay. All right. Um, next question is, um, what are – I mean, you've touched on it a little bit, but is there – outside of anything you've talked about, are there any good RPOs that, that pair well with wide zone outside of kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. You can create flow, guys. So flow is which – there's one thing I'm going to tell you about this play that's, that's different than like inside zone or power is – you're gonna you're gonna get flow on this play. So your answer on RPOs has got to be pretty simple. Okay. So let me uh, let me go. I think I had it. On. Here you go. Wide zone with RPO. Okay. And then I'll give you just this is just this year. Okay. 
So you're going to get flow, okay? So this is the win fin backside. You see LSU run this stuff. Everybody runs this. We're going we're gonna to win the slant route. We're going to flat in right here. He's going to read the apex. All he's reading is the apex defender. We're not worried about anything else because we know flow is going to happen, okay? See how he's got his head turned? You can read this kid on the head back on the back side. It ain't hard, guys. And there's your window, okay? But see what the flow creates? See how that creates flow? That's the one thing about this play people don't understand is that's why this is different. That's why when you see the Philadelphia Eagles and those other teams run this play, they're so successful with this. Uh, they're so successful with um, this play because they're willing to do that. Um, the other thing I'll tell you is um, – is create armies uh we call them armies and so this is um so you know you've seen this one right here this is a uh you've seen these okay so again cleveland so again our rules are can he make a play on the pass so who's the d who's going to be this who's the c gap fitter over the d gap fitter over here well they we know they're in quarter special so we know the d gap fitter is is legitimately it's going to be this kid okay or this kid playing down here. So he's telling him, we're going to throw this thing because we've got it. So watch. He'll turn his back to it. He knows pre-snap he's going to throw it. There it is. And we'll throw that crap all day. We'll do it for, and we'll do it from compressed sets too. So let me show you this. Let me show you. So let me see here. We'll do this from compressed sets. And we do a bunch out of compressed. And, and, and I think people really don't appreciate that out of it. So is it this one? No. That's not a bad one, I guess. Um, no. Here you go. So here we go. So we'll go from here. So again, we're gonna call if we call if we're, if we're compressed. This is all pre-snap termination. So we're gonna we're gonna basically run a flat concept, a flat screen with this kid right here, and we're gonna run out. So basically, this kid is tall. We're gonna teach team four, team four. It's the same blocking as our jet sweep. Quarterback sees that he he has a hard deck. He goes here to seven yards and in. He knows that they, we have numbers for blockers, meaning we have more guys than you got to that side uh, when it comes within seven yards. It means he's going to turn and throw it. He's going to throw it pre-snap already. See how that works? And that's one thing you can do. If you're a true spread team, um, if you're a true spread team, guys, uh, you can get into the old lock stuff, man. And that's the um, that's the good that's the goodies, right? People love this crap. Um, so, like, here's one for you. So, you spread, guys. I'll show you from the end zone, okay? So, for you spread, guys, four-man front, we're going to lock the backside. So, we're actually going to pass pro this kid, and we're going to wide zone. We're just going to run our freaking wide zone right there, okay? And you got this kid. Here's our – so, who's your guy you got to read? It's this kid right here, okay? We're going to fake it across face. He read the middle linebacker, apex defender, throw it. So there's lots of things you can create. The biggest thing you understand is it's going to create flow. So you have to have an answer. Okay. So if I know they're going to flow on me, what is my answer to the flow? And how can I, how can I stop that? Like, how can I create a better answer to that flow? Okay. So like, here's one right here. So this is tight end wing set. We're going to run this thing to the right. Okay. We're running wind fin right here. Okay. This is our number one RPO. Okay. Basically he knows who, who's the fitter. It's this kid right here. He knows that, that kid's playing hard inside leverage. So it's him one on one. There's nothing behind it. So he's gonna jab that thing. He's read that kid right there. Hang on. Let's throw it right behind his ear. And there it is. That's how we. So that's. So again, it goes back to flow. You can get. You can be as creative as you want. So my theory is this, guys. I don't do post snap RPOs because I don't like letting seventeen year old kids' decision making determine my career. <laughs> if that makes sense. Well, does I don't trust kids. Um, just keep going down this list. Yeah. Um, why wide zone over stretch? Do you run both? Okay, so, so two theories. Number one, um, if, if, who asked the question? Uh, it's, uh, it's a private comment. It just says iPad 5 for me. So. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So and you, most of you guys, are, I'm guessing, were O-linemen or have O-linemen tendencies in your lifetime. Have you ever been asked to run and chase a D-lineman who's a better athlete than you and try to hook him? <laughs> And then the O-line coach gets mad at you and everybody gets mad at you because you physically couldn't do something you physically can't do. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was our philosophy is I'm not trying to get, I don't want to get the edge because let's, let's boil it down to there's, you're playing O-line because unless you're just a dog, you're not as good of an athlete as that kid in front of you. And two, um, I don't, I've never really been fast in the backfield guys. I, I've had two years, there were two years here in Texas where I just had some straight running dudes in the backfield 
But for the most part, I've got a four six kid, four seven kid, and and he's just a he's a program kid. That's who they are. And so for me is I feel like stretch. You really need a dude that can run. And so I also think that by creating stretch, you're creating an angle that's not allowing your O line to be successful. Stretch, you're trying to get the edge. Here, I'm just going to take it if you give it to me. But let's get real. I don't. I'm almost never going to get it unless it's a four man front. Are you pinched? So that's why we do it. And I like it because it's interchangeable. I don't have to have like a super athletic tackle to try to hook the edge. Does that make sense? That's why. And that's really, I mean, it's a philosophy thing. I, I just think wide zone sets itself up. So here's the other, here's the other thought process you can understand. Number one, if I run wide zone and I'm running against an even front and I'm running against the one, and I got a three back side and he's just beating my ass and I cannot cut him off for the life of me. Well, then my answer guys is I create mids. I run mid zone and I block it the same way wide zone is. So my O-line doesn't have to learn two different runs. My O-line blocks inside zone the exact same way they block wide zone. I just changed the aiming point and read for my running back. So that kid that was running by, was chasing me down from behind, isn't chasing you. Now, he, now he's setting himself up for failure because now my running back's angles changed, even though the O-line's were the same thing, and now he can put his foot in the ground and get behind the three, and I'm going to make you pay for over pursuing. I can't do that in stretch. Okay. Hope that answered. Thank you, Coach. Um... I, I will kind of combine two questions here. Um, yeah. What are your three favorite practice drills for wide zone? And then the second part of that is what is the O line like individual period uh, kind of look like? Okay. So practice drills, number one. Okay. Number one practice drill is you have to teach a solo block. So we first thing we do is, um, is, we try to get ourselves. Okay. So the first thing that we do is we put ourselves in a situation where, okay, we're going to put our face and we're going to fit it up. And we're going to teach our kids. Okay. We're fitting up inside hand strong. And what we're going to do is we're just going to teach them what, they, what it feels like to get your head there. And we're going to teach what it feels like to just run and let that kid go where he wants to go. And I'm going to use my head and my backside hand to just try to block him. Okay. Um, if you go to my YouTube, this is no joke, go to my YouTube channel and, and look up the i have like four or five like old school cool clinic um wide zone clinics on there and john benton's got some good ones man he's got some like some towel drill stuff he does he's got you know those are some really you can visually see it because all of my practice film guys is at my school the hard drive and like you i'm probably on lockdown from my school i can't even get in mm -hmm. well I, I hope that helps but for the most part individual time guys so we teach our play action. So for us, our kids learn wide zone. So the theory is this. I don't have to waste time. I don't teach down blocks. I don't teach pulling. Um, I teach wide zone. And that's what we teach. And our theory is if I can just master that, then we just do everything we can in combos based on that. So how we break it is like, so for, I'm an O-line guy. So my O-line guy and I work together. And what we do is like for the most part is I'll take like the front side of, of the, of the O-line. He'll take the back side. So no matter what, so even with our play action blocking guys, it's the same combos as wide zone, same steps, same combos. So the kids don't really have to know any different scheme. They know wide zone and then they just settle up when we get into pass protection. Okay. You... And boop, same thing. They're running wide zone. They're just going to push it. Okay. Yeah. Um, we do pod a lot, man. Every time that's makes I just answered. We pod all the time. Um, we get in groups of two, go straight down the line and we just get, we work together. So. Do you think that's that might be a requirement of kind of installing this is to have two line coaches to kind of work with this? Or... No, I did it with one for years, man. Okay, just the right. thing is that's why and that's why I do it because the reality of it is, guys, my left guard can play right tackle, my center can play left tackle. Everyone has the same rules, everyone has the same steps, nothing changes. But this yeah. isn't power, so like I don't have to have a kid that can pull. I don't have a kid that can down block. I don't have to have a, a certain kid for a certain position. The only tell, the only thing I tell my people is this. Truly, the only solo block you're going to get on this offense is the front side tackle or maybe a front side guard, maybe. And that's usually not going to happen very often. Um, the center is always going to have help. So he doesn't have to be a, he doesn't have to be a man child. He just has to be a dude that can get the ball back there and run. That's all he is. You know? So for us, to be honest with you, I put, I kind of put my, I kind of put my crappy kids at the front side tackle most of the time. Because remember, it's the most unimportant, important block in the play. He ain't got to do much. Okay. Um, you, you talked a little bit about Tris Bunch already and how you run toss out of it. Um, yeah. Does your Tris Bunch alter how you run wide zone at all? No. Rules still stay the same because if we see an even front, 
that tight end kid again goes back to combos that tight end kid will then combo with that tackle so his combo he's the cover guy so if that guy's playing him head up and the tackle's an excellent cover guy then we just work that combo to the first backer everybody else does what they normally do our rules are always head up it's play side to head up that's our rule play side to head up so even our receivers are the same rule um, i have a question about those trips tight if you don't mind yeah, yeah. what's your what's your philosophy behind that why because we're, we're thinking about doing some more of that the compressions why do you, you know, why do you compress your formations okay so flips up. three reasons okay and no it's not because the other rams did it <laughs> number one um so this is no joke when so i lost all three of my starting receivers by the first game this year all three Jeez. so i immediately went to jv kids and kids that run four nine forties like i had one kid on my entire skill group one that ran faster than a four eight forty on the season one and i'm playing guys i'm playing guy okay so i was sitting there watching the draft with my wife guys I had I literally played against at least six of those kids in the first two rounds. That's who we get to play against. So for us, compressed sets, if because people want to run man against us. So it gives me a chance in man. So if I compress, number one, I've got your def. Okay, so let me let me go back down to it. One, I don't have to worry about man coverage because you're not allowed to get man coverage. So I can have I can win zone with those kids as long as they're well coached. Got it? That's the biggest thing. I can't. I can't win one-on-ones a man if you're just a freaking better athlete than me. Two, I do it because most defenses are designed to do what? They're designed to stop the spread now, right? Most outside linebackers in a three-man front are freaking glorified DBs is all they are. So for us is, I, I use the analogy all the time, Sonny Corleone in the toll booth, guys. Put that kid like Sonny Corleone in the toll booth. Let's, let's let those little dudes play in the box and see if they like getting beat up every play, okay? And the next thing and the biggest reason for us is I like to create – unbalanced sets without changing and moving personnel groupings so trips right squeeze for me that is an unbalanced formation like that is a true unbalanced formation think about the gaps that you have right there and so like here let me show you an example right here and this will probably help you out so i did a squeeze clinic on this last year because people understand the same same question why did you do it and and for us it's um you know there's multiple reasons okay but there's that here it eliminates man coverage. It's you can't disguise your coverage and blitzes. Okay, I can create jet motions to allow for easy, easy uh, edge plays. Okay, better rubbing. Okay, and it forces teams to declare strength. So let's look at. I mean, look at this real fast. Okay, I'm gonna look at the end zone. Okay, so let's look, look at the front side of this, guys. I got one, two, three, four. Okay, five, six gaps front side. I mean, let's get real. I have six gaps front side. I am in completely unbalanced formation. And I can quickly unbalance the other side with a jet motion and a guy coming right behind it. Okay? So that, you see what I'm saying, though? That's So when you look at that philosophy on it, is that. And then when we go two by two, here's the biggest reason. I have to ba- I'm going to balance you up because if you become unba- if you're trying to stay one high and, and, and you're trying to move people around, I'm going to find numbers. So that's why we do it, Coach. That answers the point. Sorry, I get on tangents, bro. All right, um, okay. uh, Coach Page wants to know if you could show more video and talk more about your naked boot game. Woo! Boys, naked boot game. I can do that all day. So, naked boot game is pretty simple. Um, naked boot, naked boot, naked boot. Uh, up here. This is its own clinic, guys, because it has to be. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to understand. No matter what you do in naked boot, you can tag it how you want, but you need to have base rules. And the base rules for us are very simple. You gotta have somebody taking, we teach, we teach Coke bottles, but again, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother clinic. So basically you have to have somebody up here to clear it out. You have to have somebody in the flat, you gotta have somebody crossing 17 to 22, and you gotta have somebody splitting the uprights. Who does it, how they get there, what they do, it's all up to you, okay? So in this place, for example, if I'm in true trips, that's easy. He goes here, okay? This kid will drag across. This kid will run across. Does this look familiar, guys? This is for you A-Ray guys. This is Y cross, except I just put the kid over here. That's all it is. That's where Y cross came from. It came from the old waggle stuff, okay? So I'm not going to get into the technique things, but again, okay, let me get in. Let me show you some basic alignment stuff, and we'll go from there. So you've seen that play. I'm trying to get into something basic here. Okay, so. Here it is. So we're going to run wide zone to the, we're going to run fake wide zone to the right. Quarterback's going to boot himself out. 
you're going to have a guy who's going to clear this thing out. You're going to have a guy underneath the submarine route. You're going to have a crosser, okay? And you're going to have a post, okay? Quarterback is always, when he turns his head, he's going to read the outside linebacker first. He's going to take what we call, and you got people call it the gift. We're going to take the gift. Take the gift all freaking day. Always take the gift. It's stealing yards, okay? The next thing. Yeah, this is NFL film. Guys, it shows you what everybody else runs it. So here you go right here. So this is Alabama with Tua running it, okay? Formation. They're going to fake wide zone, okay, to the to the left. So you're going to get the same thing. You're going to get it. So again, who does it doesn't matter. So now this kid's going to clear. This kid's going to bend it and get back out. Remember 17 and 22, and there's your submarine. Open up. Read the outside backer. Outside backer comes. Drop that thing off right now. Bloop. And that's how you read it. And it's stealing yards. Biggest thing is you got you to get your quarterback comfortable reading on the run. Okay? Same thing. This is Oklahoma running it. I had an offset. Okay? So, again, remember, it's the same rules. Everyone's going to end up in the same places. So, this kid's going to come back out. So, there's your comeback. He cleared it and was tagged with a comeback. Here's your deep crosser. Okay? Your tight end is coming late on a, on a little on a part right here. And there it is. You can tag it how you want, okay? It doesn't matter. Look, I got people doing this from every freaking angle, okay? So here's one right here. We'll fake the toss off of it. We're in a compress. We're almost like in a reduced uh, twins with the split back. Same thing. Same rules, man. Same rules. Same rules. We don't change it. And when you can make this thing look as whatever you want, and you can tag the front side guy whatever you want. So right here, we tag a post out route. So watch. Open up, gets around, post out, throw it. Okay, so you can kind of see, you can you can get as creative as you want to here, Coach. It, it don't matter. So, again, how do you do it? So, real simple, okay? Now we switch the backside, okay? Now we switch the backside. This kid is going to run, this kid's going to run the post. This kid's going to run the crosser. And the reason we do this is because if we see cover four and number two goes vertical, the safety's going to go with, and the crosser's usually wide the hell open. Okay? That's, yeah, that's all. all right, I'll show you one right here. So, um let me give you one again you want to do it out of the three back formation same thing somebody's got to clear somebody's got to get out here somebody's got to get here still in yards boys guys i'll run i'll run some form of a boot concept at least uh 15 times a game in fact that's how we set up most of our deep plays um that's how we set most of our deep plays 100 percent without a question asked um that's what we do so like Here's, here's one right here. Again, boot. We're going to fake the Carolina this way. We're going to boot out of it. You're going to get the submarine. You get the clear out. We call switch because they're a quarters team. He's going to run the post. This kid's going to skip release, and he's going to run the crosser. And quarterback gets around. Outside linebacker's got the flat. Hit the crosser. I mean, and that's a team with a lot better athletes than us. So, so that makes sense. And we so we do all kinds of things. In fact, we'll run four verticals out of it. So it doesn't really matter. We do a lot of stuff. I hope that helps. Okay. Answer question. It's a lot for a short question. Oh, that's good, Coach. It's good. Um, uh, what does your play action protection look like? Is it change any? Oh. Or, and ha, ha, I mean, obviously you yeah, just want to be negative, you. but no, no, I got you. I got you. All right. So who answered? Who asked that one? Uh, Coach Davis. Got you, brother. Okay, so let me help you out, Davis. So we keep the rules the same. Okay, so let me go. Tree play action on boots. Okay, so rules. Okay, so I'll do this for your rules, okay? And, okay, so here it is. If this is wide zone to the right, okay, so we're in wide zone to the right, okay, what are the what are the rules and who goes where? Or your five for five. So you two are responsible for these two. You two are responsible for those two. You've got him. And we'll, so we know the tailback's going to the right, so he has anything off the edge to the right off his fake. B-back has anything off the edge to the left on his fake, okay? We tell we tell both backs if nothing goes, check out. So here it is. Uh, they screwed it up. Uh, Brown, my bad. It was one of the right. So the other way. So it's going this way. So you two are responsible. You two are responsible. You two right there. So back goes one way. B back goes the other. And there's your pickup. So you've got you got you have seven man protection. And so we keep our we keep our rules the exact same for our for our guys. We tell our guys. Your rules are exactly the same. So if it's an even front, same thing. So we literally step just like we would step wide zone. Nothing changes. And that's 100% what we get into. I'm trying to find a 
try to find an even front for you. Um, it's, it's okay. So again, we don't, even, we don't even complete it, but it is what it is. So we're going to the right. We're going to go. So this is green. This is different. So green, we're going to set, we're going to, means we're going to solo the kid up. So we're going to get solo here. We're going to get a double team to here. Okay. And then we're going to solo up. So now you've got him, you've got him. So green as opposed to brown just means we're going to solo this up. I'd rather have him on it than a be back. So there it is. There's your combos. Exact same combos as wide zone. Make sense, coach? Yeah, so you don't pull anybody. No. So on our wides, well, I don't pull anybody on, on, on any run play. We only pull our center on boots protective. We just say, okay, you keep the exact same rules. We're going to ride it down, and we're going to run wide zone. For, it, it's going to look like wide zone everybody else. There's no reason for us to teach anything different, man. For, first of the last two questions, when you're in shotgun, uh, does the running back steps change at all? And Off, mean offset. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just read it word for word. When, when you're shotgun, what's the running back steps, and do you not put the running back in front of the quarterback, or do you put him behind, like offset or next to? Like, what is your preference there, and what is their steps? Okay, so if we're if you're sidecar offset, there's one, there's two things you gotta understand that would make it a little different than pistol under center. If you're offset, it's gonna be shuffle crossover. So again, I'm a mid zone guy too, so I need it all to look the same. I need inside zone, and why it all needs to look the same. So for us. We're going to shuffle crossover. So let me show you. I have I have clips of it. Clips of it everybody. So offense. Let's go. Why is that back? Um, what was the aim? It was the front side. Oh, what was it? There it is, right here. Okay. So so here's our rule. So you can kind of see our core our running back. So so we're going to be a yard. We're going to be. We're going to tell our guy, you're going to be a yard behind the quarterback, and you're going to be three feet away. You're going to be a yard by a yard. And our rule is you should be able to reach out with your hand and touch, and shouldn't be able to touch the quarterback's butt. We tell him, don't be a butt toucher. So we tell our kids that. And so what his rule is, is he's going to shuffle, cross over. Okay? So here he is. He's going to shuffle and cross over. He's too wide with his path. His aiming point should have been right here, so he should have been right there. His shoulders should have taken him there. He's way too perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. Okay, and I don't like that. And that's why that, that cut was rounded right there. He didn't attack the line well enough, okay? But what you need to see is, what I want you to understand is this, and this is where things are important, okay? If you're offset, remember I told you, these three have got to work in unison. So what he's got to understand is this kid, number 26, cannot lag behind the center. He's got to catch up. He's got to catch up. So we're going to tell him if you're offset, that means you got to freaking sprint your first three steps to try to get behind the center because everything you do is based on what he does. If he's lagging back here, that's going to cause linebackers to lag and that's going to screw everything up. So if you're offset, we tell him you can't, you, you can't delay, man. You got on a freaking high horse. You got to sprint to catch up to the center. Um, and there's a lot of college guys. I know like, um, Mateo over at BYU will tell you the same thing. I know all those guys will say the same thing. You've got to catch up to your center if you're offset. Uh, all right, and then the kind of last question is, can you uh, show some clips of your tight zone, mid zone, um, with uh, wide zone blocking that you talked about earlier? Yeah, if I can find some. Here you go, Coach. I didn't run any of it this year. All right. Um. So this is this was this was why this was inside zone for us and it's tagged wrong. So this was inside zone for us. So again, this kid right here had been just chasing us down, and so here it is. See how see how the running back's aiming point is actually the guard's foot. He's aiming right here. He's not aiming out here. Watch this. Watch his path. Okay, that's where he's aiming, and that's why he cuts behind it all. So again, that's what you're that's what you're going to get yourselves into. It looks the exact same for our kids. We teach our kids the exact same thing. We just tell them the only thing different is if you run, we're running it, we're running the inside zone version, the mid zone, as you call it, is we just make sure that we get square after three steps. So we're going to try to square ourselves up. Um, so it's really what it boils down to is just is here. So and I'll show you some, I'll show you something else you can see. There we go. Okay. So first play, this is, this is at Louisville. Okay. They're going to run boot first play. Can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. So you're going to see boot first play. Watch. Open up. There's boot. Take the gift. We're good to go. Okay. But you're going to see the wide zone blocking up front. Okay. So watch the offensive line. They're going to wide zone to the right. They're going to run, chase. It's true naked for them. Okay. It's good. Okay. So next play. So this is inside zone. Okay. I want you to watch the O line. 
What's that look like? What though? Yep, the only difference is back path changes. That's it. See how they over pursue everything? If they think you're gonna over pursue, then they're gonna run inside zone. Okay? So next play, he runs wide zone to the left now. I think he gets blown up because of a blitzer or something. Yeah. They don't do a good job with it. But again, watch the blocking up front. Same thing. Now it's wide zone. Okay. So the whole philosophy is um, if you can create this, everything to look the same. So my philosophy is this. If I can make you freaking think it's the same thing every three steps, the first three steps, then I've got you where I want you. And that's the whole theory of what we do. I don't, I don't want you guys to see anything different for the first three steps. I want you to focus. I want them to see the same thing. Play action, boot, inside zone, wide zone, screens. Everything looks the same. Okay, so that way, because, you know, a lot of people, they're like, oh, their, their tell is that that guard is going to, he's going to, he's going to pull on this play and they're going to down block this play. And we don't do that. We, we stay the same for three and then everything kind of develops itself.